Here's the avatar scene again. I see you. And you see. We're good. Yep. Yeah, almost feel like in James Cameron movies. So welcome, good people. Episode 17, I believe. I have this ready. Uh, 16. This is the episode. Wow. That, wow, yep. This is the episode that we are talking about. And welcome to our show. We are the essentialists. Coach Leeway McQuart and Coach Michelson, and we are talking basically about stuff that we find interesting, irritating, and useful. Okay, and we want to flush from a different perspective. Okay, and bring you another POV for you to use your own mind and think things through after us. So, last episode we talked about kids. And then we touched about a um, YouTube video is fit versus fat. And we begin to talk a little bit about what went there and uh, trying to, um, you know, like move the attention of the usual let's dig in my neighbor's garbage and trash can and <laughs> see what I can dig out because people love this shit. OK, regardless of what video of how quality the content will be, people will watch it. OK, because it's interesting when people bashing each other. OK, you are that and you are that and uh, there is no even ground. Or, although there were some very interesting points, OK, that went uh, on there and I have the link in the previous show. I'll put the link in this show too. watch it. It's nice. And we picking up basically where we kind of ended about the different way to see it. OK, and to address and um, not only by visual and Levi talked about the responsibility. OK, and I talked about value. And basically from here we are going to touch on this subject a little bit and then we're going to move on for a structure versus fun versus results. And right, so please we have our. Uh, rituals Levi you first. Unless you want. Oh, to thank you and good morning. Good afternoon, whenever people are watching. Um, yes, so the whole personal responsibility with that topic that we had with the fat versus fit, um, just to take it one step further, I think um, it's important to to recognize that there are things that are, you know, out of out of our control a little bit in that you are who you are and you're made how you're made and, and everyone's going to be different. Um, you know, we have different different genetics that we're all navigating through. And it's important to realize that the same workout, the same foods are going to respond differently to, other, to, to different people. So uh, there is nuance and, and we have to be, you know, remember that that N equals one. However, with that said, um, you know, it becomes, we, we don't know what we don't know, right? When it comes to nutrition, it comes to exercise. Like we just, there's just some things we don't know and I'm constantly learning and and uh, like we're talking, like we'll talk about with programming and structure here in, in a minute, um, you know. But it becomes our job to know. And if you know, if you want to achieve goals, if you want to um, become well, and if you want to thrive in life, it becomes your job to know. Um, when we're talking about the, the nutrition side of things, um, what we don't know often is, is if we're overweight and, and or over fat is what we don't know is is likely, you know, how we eat. each food isn't the same and, and, and how our bodies respond to um, our calorie choices and, and maybe um, how that affects us mentally and emotionally and from a motivational standpoint where uh, maybe the foods that we enjoy offer that dopamine hit but then we become lethargic after and and so it's important that we're we're paying attention to how our body responds and how we respond mentally and emotionally to the foods we're choosing to eat um, and then being aware so being intentional and being aware and so it ultimately comes down to um you know here in the u.s and and largely in the west um the the, the makeup of our foods that's provided to us is um not very good um and and it becomes more and more important that we're aware of what we're eating um and and not just you know assuming that our government is taking care of us or assuming that because we bought it at a grocery store um 
too many times here, we are also very distracted and we eat on the run. Uh, we don't have a plan and we don't prepare and we just eat what's convenient. And if it's convenient and it's, you know, at a, you know, gas station here or a convenience store here, and it's not homemade, not prepared, um, we're not being very intentional with how we're choosing to uh, consume our, our calories. And we are going to uh, suffer because of that. And I think that's kind of where we're at right now. Just, you know, we want to blame all different kinds of, of things. And again, there's some responsibility that needs to be had by, um, you know, our, our food industry, our, our pharmaceutical industry, um, our government, absolutely, they all play a role. But ultimately, again, and, and obviously, like I started with your genetics, but obviously, it's, it, it's ultimately, it's going to come down to um, you being aware and intentional with your day to day choices, and then just understanding it's going to take time. It's not something that it's not a light switch that you can flip and, and suddenly, um, oh, I, I ate really good for a week. So why am I not 30 pounds lighter? You know, and so things that we need to remember. Yeah, absolutely. And we can uh, slightly, slightly open a very little notch in the door saying that pharmaceutical companies and food companies actually want you to consume them. OK, but it's yeah. a very, very big topic to touch on. But yeah, from responsibility stand of point and you've mentioned like people, uh, people very good in um, in counting macros. But one of the most important parts in the food diary actually is how I feel. OK, not immediately after I eat what I eat, OK, because it's a dopamine hit. But uh, how do I feel overall after that? Yeah. Do I feel irritated, agitated, mad, down? And food has it. And the same food can be can have a different effect. And I've tried it in different times of a day. And this yeah. is something that is ultimately only us who can decide. And you know what? Let's take the food out of the concept of being uh, shredded. All right, but just feel good and being energized. You owe that to yourself at least. OK, if you like to being big, fine. All right, it's no problem. All right, be big, but but being whatever size you are or being very uh, miserable bodybuilder who just stuff rice in the toilet within him because he need his calories and his macros like man is not a life like. I don't know, maybe it's a life for five minutes on the beach when you're taking the shirt off, but then again, the whole beach full of guys like you, so you are a commodity now, okay? Like muscles used to be muscles with Arnold Schwarzenegger was in his prime. Now you just want, you know, package of cereals in the supermarket, okay? Like basically nobody watches you, <laughs> like, you know? Like if you, if you really take yourself down, okay, you cruise on, like not, not that I've been in LA lately or at all, but like any promenade, OK, when you cruise on the promenade and you think you have a hot shit, everybody got a hot shit. Everybody has convertibles, blonde sitting in them, so nobody sees you. All right, is the spotlight effect that we see us, right? So let's put this aside for a second, saying, you know what? I don't care about other people. I am care about myself. This is how I want to look amazing. Food wise, it affects everything. It affects how. Yeah. No, screw it. It affects your money. Eventually, it impacts your income, your ability to generate money. If you're constantly dealing with being depressed, mood swings up and down, you don't understand why you want to pick a fight and break somebody's face. And it's not. And then you go to a therapist and instead of earning money, OK, you sit on the couch and you pay money instead of looking in your food, thinking, hey, maybe this white rice, which is OK, if I'll move it, dinner before sleep, it actually will do me good instead of following the food bloggers or whatever that say that you need to eat it in the lunch, whatever, which is true for some people. But what we are nine billion people in the universe now and like right. in the world. So like all of us fall from the bell curve somewhere. All right. Um, so th like th this is the first thing. Second thing, uh, let's please and uh, um, put the um, aesthetic sides aside. 
All right, fat is beautiful and slim is beautiful. And like in dating, like in relationship, is a um, it's a uh, personal preferences. So yeah. we cannot have even an argue. It's like uh, it's like having an argument. What's better to be a Catholic Catholic or a Protestant Catholic? All right, like who's better? Stupid. Okay, do I have your uh, uh, like you know you believe in God this way? I believe in God that way. We both believe in the same God. So like we're friends. Eventually, we are be like we're believing in the same entities. Otherwise, you and I agree that there are more than one God, and then let's open discussion again, all right? And we, and we catch people on bullshit, and this is the actually talk between uh, like uh, my friend, like my like my student is a doctor, and he has Islamic doctors. Like great, it's like there are Muslims. They work, they work in Israel. Everything fine, all right? And he had a conversation. Said, "Listen, you believe in God?" He said, "Yeah, Allah." I have, we have we have one God in Islam. Fine. I said I believe in one God too in in, in Judaism. I said fine. So it means that we believe in one God. Unless you want to tell me that your God is different than my God, and then we have like the multiverse. And he said like it got him a little bit. No, pondering about this question, it's not comfortable if you think about it like this. Otherwise, we have the same religion. Eventually, we believe in the same God. So what we have, we have issues anyway. But again, I digress. Let's move back. And <laughs> you, come on, you had the war. You you had a war of roses in Europe. You had Catholics killing each other because the Puritans, because of the Protestants. Those killed those because, and it's the same religion. Okay. And you had this in Turkey, I believe, that they had similar fights. Like we believe. You, this is how you need to respect our God. So, like humanity knew the stupid wars uh, over and over again. So, talking about visual is stupid. But you talk about responsibility, and I want what I think to bring it under a common denominator, and then we are moving to the structure. And I believe it's independency, and we've touched on it. So, as long as you are independent meaning money wise and we are now taking social fare because you pay taxes i pay taxes okay we all have families so as long as you are independent as a member of a society i don't care how you look i don't care what you do and you, i don't care how many needles you stick in yourself all right the great america is built on a concept of freedom and everybody absolutely is entitled to be free nobody has the right to tell anybody OK, how to live their life as long as the life is within the house and you are not menaced to society and you're trying forcefully to affect other people. By all means, you are free. This is the amazing country. Do all right. But as long as you're independent and this is what I said previously, if you're a fed guy with the dialysis and if you're a fit guy who overshot growth hormone in your own dialysis, I don't give a fuck. It's my taxes I'm paying you, all right? And I don't want that, neither do you, okay? And this is something about that, and this is the concept of responsibility comes to play, okay? That people need to say, okay, like, do I have the means to live my life the way I want it, okay. all right? And this is, we are closing it with money, with income, with food. If you eat, like, if you take care of your physical and emotional state with exercise, whatever, with nutrition, you can or earn more and then you can be like Richard Branson, like Elon Musk or like those millionaires saying, you know what? Fuck it. I have money for private medicine. I don't need your taxes. I can do with my body, whatever I like. God bless you. Why I can be All right. But the moment that you're saying, oh, I want to play the game, but when shit hits the fence, I want you to pay for it. I don't want to take part of it because it's merely it's simply not fair. All right? All right, to anybody, okay, in the society, unless and like the only um, uh, uh, the only people, okay, uh, just miss the word here, skip my mind. Uh, the only population that are absolutely entitled for that, they are soldiers and first response responders people who give their lives, firefighters who are really protecting us, 
policemen, and if they get hit in the line of duty, then yes, they deserve the welfare that they give for the country. Now country is giving back, and now the people who slept in their bed while they was fighting, chasing criminals or putting fires, all right? It's my fair share as a citizen who was protected, who was given services, all right, to pay my share for these guys. Anything else is up to you. So it's absolutely irrelevant whether you fit, whether you fat, whether you hybrid, <laughs> or like, you know, anything in between. Take responsibility, be independent completely till the very day, Okay, like die on your own terms with your own money. All right, and end of discussion. But we're not going to have 3 million views because we don't take the garbage. <laughs> we needed to stick with Islam and, uh, <laughs> and Catholicism, I believe. It was more fun. So, and, which, and that exactly brings us uh, to the structure because Food and nutrition are two absolutely different terms. And nurturing yourself, yes, you consume food. It's same thing that I am exercising or I am working out, but do you get results? Now, results term, and I'm about to shut up now, I promise. Uh, <laughs> uh, results, and like we are like being driven to think very, very, very narrow. Like results are either number or, or like in the fat percentage or numbers on the bar or no kettlebell lifts on the platform. Now, however, you can decide your outcome and your results be, okay, sustain psychological resilience when you're coming home each and every night. Okay, like not losing it. Uh, your uh, goal can and maybe find a mate. And it's absolutely legit. But without a goal, you are lost. And then you tackle the same void that poor industry, food industry, drug industry, game industry, game, gambling, gambling industry are coming to fail. You are unsatisfied. You are absolutely unbalanced because you're doing something, all right? Nothing gets filled, nothing gets fulfilled, and you're frustrating, and then uh, you're rushing to the next best thing. Like, you open stuff, like, you, like I wrote in some posts, there is no uh, difference between flicking through uh, YouTube or Instagram fitness influencers and scrolling through Pornhub videos. It's coming to fill the same need, okay? So please, guys, don't bullshit yourself. You've seen squats. Come on, like, what do you see in Instagram? Squats, like hinges, what? Presses, rows, like any pulling for six prim like primal, mov um, uh, primal movements. This is all we have, all right? You just perform by different person, people in different outfits. Sometimes we're more close, sometimes with less close. Same as poor hump. So please. All right, unless you have, come on, okay? Like, I, I feel at least some views are going in. Oh, guys talking about Pornhub, I watch it, okay? <laughs> no, there won't be any recommendations on the channel. It's my OnlyFans channel. No, no, I'm just kidding. I don't have one. Uh, so, um, and this is, no, now seriously, this is the lack of structure is killing you, is burning you because it's a dead end and here, Mike, back to you, my friend. Structure is your thing. Yeah, so, you know, we had off camera or before we recorded, we were talking just a little bit about this topic of, of having fun versus, you know, results. Um, is, and so, like you were just mentioning, with social media, you can, you know, and, and people will tell it to me as well as they'll, they'll like, well, I, I, I come to your page, to see what I should do for the day or, or you know, um, you know, I, I like to watch your videos. I'll get people that will say, please don't speed your videos up on YouTube because then I can't keep pace with what you're doing because you're moving too fast. And the, and I'm like, why? Well, I don't I don't post my videos for you to copy me. I and mean, it's, it's a training log for myself and I just share it publicly. And for whatever reason, I've I just gotten to that habit. And the, the point is, is that 
you know, what I do is, is yes, very boring. GS is very boring to watch. However, results are not boring. The results are what keep me coming back. And whether um, it's a result on the platform, whether it's like reps or, or numbers, or it's the return on the investment that I get, you know, um, physically or mentally, emotionally, um, you know, with a structured program and I can see the effort and I look at my Google sheet and I see the progress I've made over time. There's, that's the reward. That's the, that's what keeps me coming back. I can see legitimate progress from week to week, session to session, uh, um, you know, over time. And that's, that's the return on the investment that I put in. Uh, what you don't get with randomized exercising is um, any consistency or results that, that are trackable or traceable to, to what works, what doesn't work because you're doing something different all the time. And yes, you have to strike a balance between having fun. Um, you know, the same thing can be said for, for those that like to run as just as an example, um, you can track your running, you can be on a running program, you can progress over time. And you can my kettlebell training, but it's not enjoyable for me. So um, I'm not going to uh, get into a running program because I don't enjoy it. That doesn't mean it can't be effective, but the difference is it's still a program. And what we want to do is, is not get caught up with having fun, but we want to get caught up with having results and, and getting closer to our goals. And if our goal is, it, it could be to drop body fat, it could be to get stronger, it could be to look different, it could be anything to feel better. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. And, and if you're doing something that's, you know, maybe fun, but not getting you closer to your goal over time, you're going to eventually stop doing it um, because the fun will wear off. It, it'll become a chore. And if you're not getting results, you're not going to continue to do it. And you're going to, you know, well, it didn't work for me or I got injured or, you know, I, I did too many randomized, you know, I've got too many people I follow that, you know, that's the other thing too, is like, if, if your goals are not my goals, then you have to be careful on, on trying to copy somebody that's, that has a different, that's in a different place in their life. That's got different experiences. It's got different limb lengths. That's got different training goals and, and techniques and things like that. So, I mean, you know, having, going back to having the structure of, a, of an actual program written for you, that doesn't mean that templates can't be effective. Um, but the less experienced you are, the more structure you need. Um, that way it can keep you on track and it can keep you towards your goals. And again, ultimately having results is more fun than, than just checking off your exercise box uh, for the day or the week or how often you train. So um, I guess that's the, the thing is, is finding that balance between fun and then actual results. And, and again, I, I challenge anyone that, you know, fun, fun has, is, is a novelty and it'll wear off, but results, results will keep you coming back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, actually, uh, here's a peculiar thing about fun and how it mixed together. So when I did my uh, half, half Ironman, uh, I, like my goal was, I want to finish the race smiling, uh, energetic, energized, with a sensation that I can go lifting in the evening. So this is what I told my coach. So listen, this is what I want. All right. So I describe it not in the time of minutes, of an hour. Said I don't care. Like I do care, but I don't care. I want to, like I want to have fun. So here the fun part. All right. I want to finish the race smiling. Okay, like tired but not exhausted, like, like not beat up, saying, all right, it was fun, let's lift kettlebells, right? And I actually did it, okay? We've managed to pull it. But the training itself was super structured, right? And these are always combined. Now, I hate biking. You, you've mentioned running. So, like, biking is not my thing, like, at least yet, and... Sure, not in Israel because of traffic conditions, like it's kind of playing a Russian roulette, right? Especially road biking. So maybe in somewhere in Europe, I just might go this romantic hillside ride, but I'm not in Europe. So 
Bicycle is a peculiar part of the program, but it's a program of my big vision of completing this triathlon. So I did the biking. Was it fun? To some extent. Was everything else fun? Sometimes more, sometimes less. But I had this overall vision that I said that, please, people, you, don't, you need to think way bigger than numbers because numbers can be frustrating. And with numbers, nobody can promise you that. And this is why many people fall because they cannot meet the numbers because numbers are not always in our in our reach all right and if you and if we expect the numbers too much we are going to be frustrated because life have many results uh, many um, um see it, today is my leg day uh, many surprises for us it's very dynamic and um, moreover Social media, yeah, like if you like you follow me, ask yourself why. And even if you don't leave lift kettlebells, okay, you follow in the Levi, ask yourself why. All right, like what's in Levi that makes you follow him? All right, if you're not doing this sports stuff, because there are something, and when you'll ask yourself that question and you'll be able to answer it, all right, you'll find the key to begin in search was in it for you, because if it's the consistency, all right, here you go. If it's something else, okay, if it's the discipline, here you go. Moreover, I would uh, invite you, and this is a very practical exercise, which is great. Go through your um, social media and just for a fun part, uh, make a list, like make a table. People who are providing um, uh, information and people who provide instructions because we are overwhelmed with information. We have yeah. numerous saved tabs of exercises we need to do someday, we will never do it. We are so over like flowed with information and you have everything on kettlebell sport, you can become a master of world, world class with all the information that is there and the information is illegit. But we do not need another information. We need instructions, and instructions yeah. are and instructions are personal. So here you can Good make point. it a very practical um, deviation of your social media feed. Okay, you can follow uh, guys for like information motivation. Okay, that will be keep you there because they are coming each and every day. So it's not for the actual information about stuff it's more of their um, of their character and then you have the guys that you follow they give you instructions and preferably okay so those guys who are within your age within your marital status okay within your available time frame because if you're following a rich dude who can train 24 7 it's not and he provides instructions you need to understand the instructions are not for you, all right? Anybody who buys investment books of Tony Robbins or whatever, all right? Like and many guys who like really say, and they say a very, like they say right stuff. This is how shit done. But if all you have is $500 in your bank account, it's irrelevant because to get these results, you need to invest 5 million or 500,000 and you don't have them. So already you are like looking for instructions that are not for you, at least not yet, right? So search the guys who will teach you, like Ramit Sati, okay? He has very nice stuff, right? About how to start investing from, one, from five bucks, right? And, th and there are instructions. So by that and by providing, uh, like, we, you know what? And here's the irony. You grew, every one of us grew and going through life because we had it structured. We had a structured, structured curriculum in the kindergarten, then we went to school, then we went to high school. If you go outside your house, you turn and you look at your house, even if you have payments on it, you got this house, not because you did random jobs each and every day, confusing your muscles or confusing the tax uh, authorities is because you're fucking 30 years doing the goddamn same thing. 
And this is the structure that you live in. Yes, it's boring. And if you have a sustainable relationship, brother, you have the same woman near your side. Right? Yeah, and you need to make some effort, both of you probably, to make this shit work. So how come exercise become a refuge to, like, I can do, like, whatever? And you know what? Here another thing. I'm sorry to bust your myth here, but in order to be in the level, and we've talked about it, in order to be in the level to do crazy shit, you need a very structured, solid base of powerlifting, of weightlifting, of kettlebell, yes. especially if you want to juggle. <laughs> boy, oh boy, you need to do some work before. Okay? And then you can afford yourself like rich people do, saying, you know what? I'm in that state in my life. I'm so well conditioned that I can just go and throw some random shit. All right? But most of the people are far from being there, all right? So here is your goal. Please, you want to have fun within 10 years, five years from now saying, okay, and ask yourself or better off a coach, a question coach. I want to do crazy, stupid shit in five years. What do I need to attain in order to be able? Same as going to yeah. a business consultant. I want yeah. to fucking retire in the woods, okay? And living in complete solitude Okay, shooting everybody that comes near one mile to my house, and I want the money work for me. What I need to do now? And he will tell you probably lick some asses and shut and swallow and deal with customers and do the hard structured work before you can buy this hut in the wood and whatever on, on or just fishing on the beach. So we are going always these circles. And if you want it happen close, sooner than later, and again, you're coming to get, get yourself a coach. Cut yourself yeah. a slack and short yourself your, like, your this learning curve, all right? It's not about being stupid. It's actually about being wise and being very strong because weak men don't ask for help. Strong men do. And wise men do, understanding that, listen, like I value myself and my time too much and I understand that I don't have much left to invest now 10 years in something that I, it's not even my job. Okay, so please come, all right? Like help me, do it, like, like guide me, do for me, let me, let me see how I can move you. Okay, so, and again, if you can have instructions for you, think very wide outside the box. If you want to train, all right, and if your goal, you like my goal, said to train, to be a living proof for my kids. Now my training took a various. I spread myself like pretty much. I did this stuff, and I did. I do still do some stuff, but again, the top goal is being there, like being this role model for my kids, show them, showing them by live example that you can attain everything. And this is the fun part. And this is not numerical. This is not smart goals. They don't have any time frame. But within those goals, I'm having my modulation and my structured, okay, small bites. So here again, we have this, okay, holistic approach for the uh, seemingly independent um, parts of the equation. Yeah, that's it. Your turn. My turn. Well, <laughs> we, um, yeah. So hiring a coach, um, but just provide something to provide structure. And, and again, the more experienced you are, you might not need, you know, really intense coaching, but but having programming that's going to get you closer to your goals. And again, that may not be fun at the time, but results are fun. And you know, like you had talked about, like to, to achieve a goal in the future, you have to make some sacrifices currently. And you might um, you might have to make some sacrifices in your style of training. Um, you may not um, have to be entertained while you're exercising or be entertaining while you're exercising. You may have to do the boring work for quite a while. But again, you know, looking to the future, um, it's, it's, in my opinion, very worth it to, to sacrifice some quote unquote fun and freedom in your training to actually train to achieve a result. 
um, and, and then you can be more, you know, scaled back or, or less intense with your training and, and have more fun for a time. And, but when it's time to get serious and it's time to achieve a goal and it's time to work towards um, something, then yeah, it's, it's going to take some structure and it's going to take some help from the outside to keep you on the straight and narrow. Um, you know, I can always work out and I can always, I, I'm at the, the point now in my life and in my training life that I don't have to be as structured if I don't want to compete anymore. And I can still maintain a level of leanness or a level of, of musculature because of how I choose to eat and how I choose to exercise. But again, that is, there's going to come to a point like at, at some point in time, I'm going to get bored of, of just being random or, 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 you know, silly. I I'm going to want to like, I want results. I want to, be challenged to to move in in a direction towards a goal and it doesn't matter what the goal is again it can be many different things but um, that's what keeps us coming back for more and that's what keeps us motivated because that result is the reward and it's not always fun to get there but the it's the, never when fun you look back when, when you look back you're like oh that wasn't so bad you know it's kind of cool to have this result it's kind of cool to have to, to attain a goal um, you know, and then we readjust and go, go forward again. So, yeah. And, you know, to recap the episode and I like in saying last words, what on what you've said about fun or not fun. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's not fun, but you need to think like this. Eventually we will die. It's inevitable and it's a bliss in some way. I wouldn't like to live forever. So when I die, the only thing we have is our memories. And then ask yourself, like, this is the exercise is what my 100 year old self. Like you're said, you're sitting on a deathbed with your grandkids. What are you going to tell them? How many random stuff will you remember? How many memories have you created? Zero. You will be empty saying like, like, yeah, I wasted my life. Instead of person said, you know what? When I was young, I did ten, like I did half marathon here. I did my kettlebell stuff there. Then I got crazy. I tried to do triathlon. Then I went and do some open swimming and the kids will say, wow, like they will look at you. And then you, while you telling your, like you will tell it aloud, you're saying, wow, I did accomplished because I have this past to prove it from A to Z. So many things like my life was full and same was like same in business. I came to this country with nothing. I leaving this yeah. country with everything. And this is a yeah. fucking story. It's a great story. But if you're constantly moving from jobs, what will you tell? Yeah. Like, where, where have your life gone? All right. So exercise number one, like sit with yourself up to this day and be honest, write on a paper how many stories can you say? Like fitness wise. Okay, we're, st we're staying with fitness. How many goals you've actually attained? All right, how many body, uh, bodybuilding competitions have you gone? Okay, then this is being naked. Like this is really being there. Okay, the man in the arena. Okay, I believe it was Roosevelt's great speech, if I remember correct. Or Eisenhower, no, or maybe Eisenhower, the man in the arena. Like the, the, the spectators doesn't count. Only the man who bleeds in the arena do. So how many events have you done? How many stuff you signed up and you can really like talk about it, okay? What have you done? And if you are 40 and you have about two or three, man, you better be busy, all right? If you wish to, okay? Same in life. And the second exercise, and this is I adore. From time to time, I'm getting a, a blessful student who comes and says, coach, I want to like you to coach me. I'm humbled, honored, very thank you. But then he says the most wonderful things. I'm 44, I have three kids, one of them is six, 10 and 15. Uh, I have a wife, I, I work as a young doctor shift, blah, blah, blah. I have like one hour to train four times a week and my budget is per month. And I'm saying, thank you, God, thank you. <laughs> finally, okay, but this is like, finally there are men who did his homework and he's coming and bring, bring me to like, he did his preparation. He absolutely aware what he is, the state 
in his life that he currently is with kids, with wife, with dynamic, with everything, and he still wants the goal. So he immediately ensured that his journey will be fun simply because it will adapt it and it will be uh, very um, like harmonious to his lifestyle. Or maybe I will say, you know what, you can't. Unless you can carve another, you know, like hours from here and there, because if you want this goal, you will have to work more. But so do this exercise, okay? Sit with yourself, at, like, let's think you want to fire, uh, to, to hire a virtual coach. Okay, write your resume, write your pitch saying, coach, okay, like you are the hiring man, okay? This is my, okay, this is my conditions. What can you do? Like, what can I, what can I tell? Can, can you coach me? Right, do this and you'll have so much clarity and you will have so much answer about why have you failed before? Because if you try to tackle stuff and now you see that you absolutely couldn't, then at least it's a blissful awakening. And we've talked, yeah, today was, today was good. Today was good, today was long, but it was interesting and it was fun. So we will leave you there with some practical and instructional exercises to do and put the nutrition log to how do you feel after yeah. each couple of hours after each intake. And right. it will give you insights to begin shifting and maybe searching, okay, in a correct direction and not just blindly scrolling about, you know, salads and steaks, whatever. So, beautiful people, we thank you for being with us. Uh, as usual, please ask questions if you have. Bring up topics that you want us to discuss. And we'll be seeing you in the episode 17. Yep. Thanks, Michael. All right. Thank you, Levi. And goodbye. Yes, sir. <laughs>